Well, good morning, everyone, uh, and welcome to cup number seven of Cosmic Coffee here on your Thursday morning, if you're, you're out here in the West. Uh, I'm Jeff Hall, an astronomer and director of Lowell Observatory in Flagstaff, and we're going to talk today about our Native American Astronomy Outreach Program. Now, first, uh, each, each week on Cosmic Coffee, we give a little shout out to one of our uh, coffee houses here in Flankstaff. Um, today, that's the, the Flankstaff Coffee Company down on uh, in the little alley near Route 66 between uh, San Francisco and LaRue. They're open for, for pickup with a, a nice uh, distance to waiting line. So give them a little business as, as they and so many other businesses uh, struggle their way through the current uh, shutdown. Uh, now, today we have with us uh, two guests uh, from our Native American Astronomy Outreach Program, uh, Deidre Hunter, is one of the astronomers here at Lowell and one of the originators of the program all the way back in 1996. So this has been going for almost 25 years now. And in 2014, uh, Deidre won the American Astronomical Society's Education Prize for this program. It's one of the major annual prizes of our professional society and quite a distinction. With us also is Alethea Crawford, our multicultural outreach facilitator, uh, th this program has been expanding dramatically in the past several years, and Alethea is a substantial part of the reason why she's overseeing the day-to-day -day operations of the program these days. So I'm going to start, uh, start off the show by just turning it over to Alethea, who has a presentation for you about what we're trying to accomplish here. Um, Alethea. Yes, good morning. Um, first off, let me introduce myself and... Navajo, Yag uh, Ebene, Shea Alethea Little, slash Crawford, and Chef Maidish Gizinisme, Yedene, Tachini, A. Bashashin, Nakarene, A. Dashiche, Kodichini, A. Dashinella, A. Kut Al Dene, Stenishna. So, good morning. Um, we'll get started. This is the Native American Astronomy Outreach Program. We started back in 1996. It was formed by two lovely ladies who I consider role models, Dr. Deidre Hunter and Dr. Amanda Bosch. And the main objective, the goal of the program is to get Native American students excited about science, specifically astronomy. So we've been partnering with several teachers out on the Navajo and Hopi Reservation. Just recently, we expanded to the Apache tribe of Arizona. And we are trying to help the teachers incorporate more STEM in their everyday lesson. There's a picture of Deidre and Amanda. And here we have um, the teacher-astronomer-educator partnership. We have two different types. We have one that's traditional, one that we've been doing since the beginning where we would partner with a teacher and we would make multiple visits, classroom visits, to the classroom and do different hands-on activities that are STEM related. So in the photo to the left, we have students here building a solar oven where they will be, well, they baked cookies or hot dogs or make s'mores, whatever you can think of. And on the right here, we have students making an edible Cell. So we cover different components in STEM. Now, our newest adventure, what we call the pipeline system. Now, we are currently in a three-year study. The study was brought on by teachers. We had asked teachers, I believe back in 2015, uh, was that, is that correct, Deidre? Uh, yeah, about three years ago, we asked teachers how we can help them in the classroom, how we can make a huge impact. And one of the main goals was curriculum development. So our master teacher, Todd Gonzalez, he designed wonderful curriculums over the past three years for the fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, and now eighth grade. And we partnered up with Kianta Unified School District, we partnered up with their teachers there to teach these curriculum units to the students. And so with the pipeline, 
it follows fourth grade the students there they would be partnered with the partner teachers in fifth grade and so on for the three years and we are hoping that makes a huge impact on the students in that you know bump step their uh, scores and all of that gets them motivated because the whole main goal is to get them motivated about science to just want to pursue yeah. a career in science our goal is to have Native American astronomers, Native American aeronautical engineers, uh, neurosurgeons who are Native American. We want them to be successful and out there. And with the pipeline, we are hoping that this new technique will definitely help with that. And so part, part of our, um, part of what they do is, is uh, they make posters, part of the outreach. It, the curriculum is based on um, project-based learning, and the project is a poster. And so that's what you're seeing here is the, their final poster. I love those poster sessions. It's it's really like a miniature version of going to a professional meeting and, and talking with the presenters and asking them questions. And they just do a great job with it. They're really fun. One of the... Um, <laughs> requirements is that they bring their posters on their field trip and then they present it in a poster session to the Lowell staff. And so they put a lot of work not only into the poster, but practicing how to introduce themselves and what they want to say, which is good. Mm -hmm. And then we also host a community star party at the school where they do post the presentations. And that is what is going on on the image to your right. The students are presenting to the community, to their family. And it was just, it was so cute because they were all so nervous and excited to present to their family that they were wanting to make sure they knew everything possible about what they were presenting. And so I would get random questions and um, it was just, it was adorable. They would dress up to you. Um, specifically for that. And so it make, it makes them feel like scientists. And that's the whole uh, direction that we're trying to do. Go. Oh. And here we have the field trip, Lowell Observatory field trip. At the end of every partnership, we do a field trip to Lowell Observatory. They get to present to scientists, engineers, astronomers at Lowell Observatory, and then we take them out to our research facilities to where they get to tour the telescopes and see exactly what astronomers do. And of course, we also do like hands-on science activities, especially with um, playing with liquid nitrogen. They love that. And so the image to the left here, we have a group of students presenting to Lowell Staff. And on the right, we have Deidre here presenting an image to the students. And they are definitely fascinated by that. This is the first time that they've ever seen a research facility or have been involved in this type of activity. And it just blows their mind. It's a memory that they'll carry with them all through life. It's such a great opportunity for them. That's that's the, uh, an old favorite space of mine. That's the control room of our 1.1 meter telescope out at Anderson Mesa. It's actually a floor below where the telescope's located. I spent many a night out there and to have access to a, a facility like that, that for these kids is, I'm just so thrilled we can provide that for them. And then we also have a new component that we just recently introduced. It's the Role Models Program. So this is a photo of one of our partnered groups with Raytheon's American Indian Network, also known as RAIN. And so with this whole new project, my whole goal was to allow students to see other Native Americans in professional fields. Because you have students who, when you ask them a question like, what do you want to be? Who, what do you want to do when you're an adult? 
they usually say like, oh, I want to be a bus driver. I want to be a police officer. I want to be a teacher. I want to be um, a nurse and so forth. And it's these different careers that they see in their everyday life. And by introducing them to a whole different network, it's allowing them to see that they have so many options, so many different directions that they can go. Um, and so we partnered up with uh, Raytheon as well as Gore, and they bring out their engineers and their scientists, and both, both organizations, they do a wonderful job with the students, talk to the students, they tell them exactly what they went through, their own life stories, and the struggles, and how they didn't give up and how they continue to push forward to get their degree and to get the job in which they are now working at. And just having that impacts every student. You can just see their reaction, their expression, their eyes light up when they see or hear these individuals introduce them in their native tongue. They're like, oh my God, that person's Navajo. They're like, Miss Olivia, did you know they're Navajo? And I'm like, uh, yeah, that's why they're here. <laughs> so they just, they get so excited and they'll talk to them. They'll shake their hand. They'll take photos with them. And of course, you know, Raytheon and Gore, they'll bring like a little piece of, uh, just a memorabilia that they give to the students so they can have and keep with them. So here's Raytheon, and then the next photo is for. So not only with the role models program do they do presentations and they do hands-on activities, but they also participate in the poster session. So on the image to the left here, we have Gabe with four listening in to a presentation. Um, and then on the right here, they're giving a presentation on what they do and how they got to where they are. And another new component that we've added is book club. So I, I myself, I love to read. Um, and one thing that we noticed with the Native American community, the students, they have four reading scores. And so my partner teacher last year, she asked me, she goes, how can we target this issue? How can we improve their reading? How can we improve their writing? And of course, in my mind, I'm thinking the only way to improve reading is to actually read. <laughs> so which is what we've been doing. Uh, Deidre and I, we've been purchasing a number of books for the classrooms. And as a whole group, we read them. We have in-class sessions where they analyze and they write summaries. And they highlight vocabulary words that they don't know. They later define then they have to use it in their own personal writing and so forth. And so, with book club, what we do is we research a number of different books, we review them, see how we can tie them into the curriculum, and we go from there. And so one of the books that was a major hit with my students was Race for the Sun, and that's by Rebecca Roanhorse. And the reason it was such a big hit was because we could tie in Navajo mythology. We could tie in our cultural stories into the book. So as we're reading the book, we had a huge discussion saying, asking students like, oh, what, what did your, what does your grandma, your grandparents say? How do, what's their story? How do they incorporate it into um, your everyday life? And of course, I would give my input uh, that my partner teacher, she would give her input and together we would go forward. So book club does offer a lot to where we are able to incorporate a lot of Navajo culture into it. And so image here on the left is of one of my students. 
I remember this. I was picking on her. <laughs> she was so interested, fixated on the book, and I was trying to bother her. I was trying to tell her, like, hey, take a break. Let's have a discussion. And she goes, it's getting to the really good part, okay? Just give me a moment. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> and um, the picture on the right, the far right here, we also have book club in our summer camp. So students here are reading, I believe it's The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind. And as you can tell, they are also very into it as well. Sometimes it's a little rough getting them into book club, but once they start reading and they see everything, they see what it's about, they just fall into it. I think your class last year got so into it that we were on our fourth book when, you know, ordering our fourth uh, set of books. Yes. And when the school shut down. <laughs> And then there was the parent that called you because his son, her son, missed book club so much that he wanted to know, what is this book club thing? <laughs> I had to give her a set of recommended books. <laughs> so it definitely is um, a hit. I, my class, we have a a tradition, I guess you could say. We started it at the beginning of the school year once we start book club. So when we get new books, I tell them, keep your book on the table. Don't open it. Don't do anything. Just keep it there until everybody gets their book. Then I tell them, grab your book and open it to the middle and take a big woof of it. Just smell the book. <laughs> and at first... They thought it was so weird, but now they're so excited. They're just like, "Hurry up! Pass out the books. We gotta, we gotta do this." <laughs> and so, it definitely, it definitely, it warms my heart, you know, because they're excited about books. I get so excited when I have a box waiting for me at home from. Barnes & Noble or thrift books or wherever I'm buying books. I'm like, oh my gosh, I got my books. And I'm so excited. And whenever I come with a big box to my classroom, the students, their eyes just light up when they see me carrying a big box. And they run over, they're like, may I help you? Do you need help? <laughs> so definitely book club has been a, hu a huge hit and planning on continuing that with the program. And then another um, component to the program, cultural connections. The Native American Astronomy Outreach Program, not only is it our mission to get students excited about astronomy or science, but it's also to keep that cultural connection. And so what my team and I have been doing is we've been looking at different approaches to keeping the culture included into the everyday lesson. And not only that, when it comes to wintertime, when we can tell the stories, the emer um, emergent stories oh. and so forth, we do that. We bring out uh, our subcontractor, Verna Tallselt, and she tells Native American culture stories, constellation stories, sorry. And the students, they love that. They listen, they take it all in. And here is an image of a lesson that I've been working on. The Navajo language lesson is ecosystems. So with this, I'm trying to include not only like the Navajo language, but the importance of how all of this is tied into our stories, as well as, you know, just taking care of Mother Earth. Because students, Nowadays, they realize, you know, climate change, the effects of it, and the big impacts, and they want to do something about it. But they also want to know how our ancestors, our grandmas and grandpas, how they, a long time ago, kept the earth nice and beautiful. And so we're trying to go back and learn all of that. 
and apply it to today's world. And of course, they were making fun of this image because I drew this. This is my rough draft. I showed my students and they're like, why is your coyote and your squirrel bigger than your human? <laughs> I was like, they're genetically modified. <laughs> but it's just activities like this that we are trying to incorporate a lot of culture, a lot of the language, and a lot of the story. Uh, we have a question. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, what other ways have you adapted the program to the culture you're working with? So through our lessons, we have created, we're in the process of developing lesson plans with the Navajo language, with the Navajo culture, stories, and so forth. And through book club, like I was saying, when we have our in-class discussions, we try to apply it to our own culture. Like with Race to the Sun, for example, that's about a little girl named Nijuani Begay who is trying to save her dad from being, oh gosh, I don't want to give it away, but <laughs> like uh, the antagonist is trying to hurt the protagonist, and so she has to go back and taken a lot of her culture to to do that, to learn, she has to learn about her culture in order to save her dad. And so we've been talking to the students and saying, okay, well, how would you, I'm trying to think, what was one of the questions we had? How would you apply living in, in today's society to living in the book and trying to save your dad with limited knowledge like who would you go to who would you ask for help and so a lot of the students said oh i would ask my grandparents i would ask my grandma i would ask my nelly lady and we're like good good go do that and then come back to us <laughs> we want to know we're all learning here we're learning together and of course we also have the navajo constellation stories that we do as well during the winter time when we can do them and we incorporate that into our lessons as well we have a game called navajo astronomy bingo where we have the different constellations and we play the game we yell out the constellation name and we tell the story behind it and so forth and the students they love to do that and we are also trying to incorporate the string games into different lessons and of course that's only done during the winter time so we are approaching the cultural connections from various perspectives and it's not just me who's working on it we have a whole team as well dedicated to this because it is a major component and also for example the fifth grade curriculum unit is on um, characteristics of the planets and so their project is to figure out how they um how they how a human would live on another planet and what they are asked to think about what aspects of their culture would they take with them if they were went to mars or they went to venus to live what would what cultural aspects would they take with them to help them live there Uh, we have another question. Can you show us a native constellation or do the stories have to be told by someone who has permission rights to tell the story? I, for me, I do tell the Navajo constellation stories to my students. I bring in photos that were given to me by a teacher from Staley Unified School District. And I just give a quick summary very brief i don't go into detail so the thing with going into detail you you have you have to be um respectful and mindful and so because there's such a young age you can't go too much into detail so you just have to give the basic summary to the student and then from there it'll be the the student's job or if they choose to 
their parents' job to continue that education as they're growing up. But so we we do follow the Navajo or Dine um, uh, stand the, the uh, Navajo Nation standards uh, for that are grade specific. So um, we make sure that we comply with that. Uh, another question is, aren't there any summer stories? Why? <laughs> <laughs> um, there, we do have summer constellations out. So, like I said, we just give a very brief summary of the constellation when we're teaching them. A lot of the constellations, their stories go are tied into ceremonies that you have to partake in, participate in, and if you haven't gone through that, then you can't really be told those stories, or you can't really tell people those stories. And just to make it clear to people, um, so we have this, we have a team of people, um, and um, two of the people on the team, one of them is Alethea and another one are Navajo, and they can talk about the Navajo uh, constellation stories, um, and our uh, person that we collaborate with can come to the classroom and do that, but I can't, and the people like me who are not Navajo, we don't do that. Yeah, it's just uh, out of respect as well for the culture as well as the teachers. So before we go into the classroom, we usually ask the teachers, like, we can do the presentation, or if the teacher wants to give the presentation themselves, they have that option. Or if they have a cultural teacher who will come in and give the presentation. There's so many different options, and whichever the teacher decides, we respect it and go with it. Before we move on, um, I missed a question going back to book club. <laughs> <laughs> oh. and the question is, are there any recommendations for second graders? And so we have to, maybe Alethea knows some second grade books, uh, <clears throat> but um, to be clear, we work with fourth through eighth grade, so we don't think about second grade. Um, however, there were some books that uh, Verna Tossalt recommended that we get our classrooms that were for were actually aimed at younger kids, and I don't remember the names of them right now. Do you remember those? I don't, I don't remember the names. Um, I actually don't have any recommendations for second graders. I've just been researching for fifth, fifth, seventh, and eighth grade. <laughs> um, the fourth graders read um, Out of Dust. Out of the West? Is that what it was Because they Over. were. Sand dunes. So they read about the the um, the Great Depression and the issues with <laughs> uh, uh, loss of uh, topsoil and all that kind of stuff. The Dust Bowl. The Dust Bowl. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. On. sorry, we don't have suggestions for second grade. Yeah, it's. I usually take. A while, like a good, I take a good chunk of my weekly schedule to dedicate towards book club. So I review these books, I highlight key vocabulary words that we can apply in the lesson and go from there. It's a very time consuming, but it's worth it. <laughs> and one more question on uh, the constellation stories is it appropriate for students to share stories as well? Oh yeah, definitely. They love to share their stories, what they've heard from their family. Because each region, they have their own different story. Each family, they have their own different story as well. And so, there's no right or wrong answer with that. Alright, you still continuing. There's a new, um, a new component we have added that I am very excited for is summer camp. We started the summer camp back in 2018. We went live with two grades, the sixth grade and the seventh grade. In 
And so the purpose of the summer camp is to reinforce the curriculum, whatever they're learning, as well as to, to make it fun, to just introduce them to so many different things. So pictured here are the summer camp campers at the ice lab, which is run by Dr. Will Grundy. And they were learning about Titan. And as you can see, we gave them the option to dress up if they wanted to wear their traditional attire. And a lot of them did. We also have a picture day where we all dress up in our traditional attire and we take photographs of ourselves. Well, not our, of ourselves, but like as a huge group. And the ice lab, it's very complex, but the students, they try their best. They pay attention and they're just so fascinated with the instruments and what's going on, their research and their focus. Then we have here on the left, we do a lot of hands-on activities. So on the left, the image here is of students building a windmill. Our focus here was renewable energy. And then on the left, or on the right, sorry, I'm getting my hands mixed up. On the right here is students building a colony on Mars. How it would look and what they would include. So with this activity, a lot of our activity, what we try to do is we try to add the cultural connections. So with this particular lesson, we ask students, mm -hmm. okay, if you're going to go to Mars, what are you going to bring? What are you going to build? And as you can see, we have a basketball court because basketball on the Navajo Reservation is a big deal. So res ball, they love to play basketball. And we ask students, okay, we're going to have a basketball up there. How how high do you think that basketball is going to bounce? Like, how much air do you have to add? What can you do to not make it bounce? So just different questions like that. We are asking them and they think about it and they have to apply what they're learning to solve that so, um, problem. And of course we have our Navajo Hogan here and we were asking them, okay, there's no wood on Mars. How would you bring that to Mars? Like how would you even build that? Would it be a community Hogan where everybody shares it or would you, you know, become a millionaire and <laughs> ship them with yourself to Mars? Like, how would you do that? And so just different questions like that. We also have a shade house and they wanted a sheep corral. And again, we're asking them, okay, if you're bringing sheep to Mars, how are you supplying them air? How are you going to get them there? What are you going to feed them? <laughs> and that's the different you know, questions we ask our students and they consider it and they they come up with nifty crafty ways of solving the problem. <laughs> so And we've also had to come up with nifty crafty ways to solve the crude problem for summer camps, which is that um, people are isolated at home. So summer camp was supposed to start the first will we'll start the beginning of June, but Alethea and the team are working hard to um, figure out how to make it a virtual summer camp. Yes, we are definitely trying to accommodate our Native people during this, this time. So going forward, oh, that's the last one. So one huge, huge um, thing. Thank you to all the foundations and to the individuals who have and are continuing to support the program. Without you guys, the program would not exist. So thank you very much. I see Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. Indeed, and I'll add my thanks as well because you know one of the things I think that most makes my day is every now and then I'll get a, a email in my inbox from from a parent saying that that their visit to Lowell Observatory had changed their kid's life and, and made a positive difference in, in how that young person views science and, and potentially views their careers. And it's just one of our very highest callings to inspire and engage the, 
the minds who will succeed us in a technical society and do cool things like aerospace and um, you know uh, vaccine research and all of those things that we depend on. So uh, so yeah, thank you very much and thanks, Alethea. So I think um, we'll just wait a bit and see if any additional questions come in on the feed. Um, but yeah, so this has been one of our, our marquee programs and many kudos and thanks to Deidre and Alethea for keeping it going all these years. Alethea and I are currently wearing our the oh. t-shirts from summer camp last, last summer. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Yeah, the the t-shirts were um, the t-shirts were designed by a Native American artist. His name is Stephen Paul Judd, and so he does a lot of community outreach as well for Native American students. Okay, well, we've had uh, quite a few questions actually during the presentation, so that's that's great. And I see there are from some fam familiar names, so thanks for tuning back in to another cup of cosmic coffee. Um, <clears throat> we will be back next week with another show. Um, uh, I I will I have a conflict, so I'm going to turn over the hosting duties for that week to to someone else. But we will be back online with you at 9 a.m. next Thursday. So for now, we'll say thank you and goodbye. And thanks, Deidre and Alethea, for a great introduction to our Native American outreach program. Um, everyone online viewing, uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in our broadcast soon. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.